Before I start, I would like to say thank you to those who have come a little more forward in the, uh, in the pews. We don't feel just quite so isolated up here. If, uh, most people gather near the back. We are very welcome wherever you sit. I don't mean, uh, but it's always nice if we have a few people up near the front and we're very, very grateful for each one who is here this morning. I'm still in the Easter mood as I've been praying that God would give the message for us this morning. This is the third message that I am delivering from John chapter 10, verses 14 to 18. This is the first time in my life that I have done this, but I believe it's the leading of the Holy Spirit. And so together we're going to look at the importance of not only the death, but also the resurrection of Jesus. Three Sundays ago, we looked at, two Sundays ago, three weeks ago, we looked at the phrase Jesus said, I lay down my life. And last Sunday, we looked at the other side of that And I have power not only to lay down my life, but I have power to take it again. Within three days, Jesus was resurrected. And he was resurrected in a new human body. That's part of my message this morning. Many people don't realize it, but resurrection is part of everyday life. Almost every time seeds fall into the ground, either naturally or placed there by people, they die. But spring up in a new life. Death is also a part of everyday life. Many deaths are final, but many deaths are actually a new beginning. This is death before resurrection, or maybe we could say death which is part of the prelude to resurrection. Hallelujah. Since creation, the death and the resurrection of Jesus is the most important event in human history. And this was planned even before creation. There are five important reasons I would like to share briefly with you this morning. And because of time constraint, I don't have the opportunity to go into any great detail. Important reason number one, to provide the basis for the salvation of mankind and for mankind's reconciliation with God. Apart from the sacrifice of Jesus, the Father had no basis. Are you listening? Apart from the sacrifice of Jesus, the Father had no basis to save us. He needed a lamb. And that's why Abraham's prophecy is so profound back in Genesis 22, almost 2,000 years before Jesus came. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, three terrible events took place. One, sin entered the souls of Adam and Eve. And the effects have been seen even in nature. Secondly, therefore, this first couple died spiritually 
just as God had warned them. Thirdly, their relationship with God, their creator, was broken. So they were separated from God. Sin and death entered and spoiled God's beautiful creation through one couple, Adam and Eve. And by creation, I mean not only the outside natural creation, but the inside created creation, the soul, the spirit of man. God then ordered Adam and Eve to leave the garden of Eden, and this emphasized the fact that they and all who would be born in the future were separated from a relationship and from fellowship with the Holy God. This is why, basically, man-made religions are useless. They don't deal with the basic issue of life and death. Because sin, the disease of sin, and the effect of that disease is death. Not only physical, but spiritual. And the Bible talks of the second death, which is the final separation from God for those who have never put their faith in the Lord Jesus. And they will be eternally separated from God. The natural mind and heart is sinful and hostile toward God. Romans 8 verses 5 to 8. I give the references in case anyone wants to jot down and do the reading, do a bit of homework, because only I only have the authority to share the Word of God as I stand up here. We want to be independent. We don't want God or anyone else controlling us, telling us how we should or should not live. Most of us are also too proud and stubborn. We want our own way. As Sinatra used to sing, I did it my way. Anybody heard that song? If there ever was a song that expressed the human spirit, that's it. I did it my way. Come and congratulate me. But that doesn't fit in the presence of God. No one is going to get to heaven their way. No one. You only come God's way. And that is through the broken body and outpoured blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many people don't understand that the wages, the end result of sin is death. And spiritual death means final and eternal separation from God in a very terrible place called hell. We need God to save us. from our sin and from the effects and from the punishment of our sins. If you're listening carefully, you'll notice I'm using two words, sin and sins. We just had a Bible study with some of the young people in this church where we were looking at the blood and the cross of Jesus. And I emphasize for them that there is the disease of sin, 
over which you and I can know victory. But that does not mean that we will from now on be sinless. We may, because we're still human, commit occasional sin. We need to be brought back into relationship and fellowship with God. And that is only possible over the broken body and the outpoured blood of our Savior, the Lord Jesus. That's why the cross is the symbol of our faith. And the way God has met both needs is by placing our sin, your sin and my sin, on the Lord Jesus as our sin bearer and causing Jesus to be punished instead of us, the sinners. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. So now when we trust in Jesus as our Savior and ask God to forgive us, He can do so not because of any merits that we have, because even our good works, the Bible tells us, are like smelly, filthy rags. We don't have much of a hope, do we? So now, when we trust in Jesus as our Savior, and we ask God to forgive us, He can do so because Jesus has already taken our punishment and sin away. He's taken our punishment and when he died and was buried, he took everything on his broken body. Gone. Did you know you're already forgiven even before you ask? But to apply and to make that effective in your heart and life, you need to repent and you need to ask God to forgive you. In Jesus, we are already forgiven. John 3, 16, 17, and 36. We can also begin our personal relationship with God as our Father and be reconciled to Him when we receive his Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 12 to 16, and John 3, 5 to 7. Important reason number two, to prove, demonstrate to the world that Jesus came from God. Jesus utters this truth in a prayer in John 17, verses 20 to 23. The Lord Jesus spoke many times about the fact that he came from God the Father, but most people would not believe him, like today. In John 8, verse 23 to 29, Jesus was teaching very clearly the Jews as they were standing around him that he came from God the Father. And in verses 27 and 28, we read, they did not understand that he was telling them about his father. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man on the cross, then you will know that I am the one I claim to be that I can do nothing on my own, but I speak just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. You see, Jesus, in his great mission statement, said, I have come not to do my will, 
but to do the will of him who sent me. Jesus is the only one who has come to earth from heaven, sent by God the Father, according to their plan, prepared before even they had created anything. Reason number three. To signal the end of the cursed blood life of sinners. We shared this last Sunday a little. To signal the end of the cursed blood life of sinners and to signal the beginning of a new life in Jesus. Our natural human blood life is cursed. Why? Anybody remember the answer? Because of our culture? No. Because of our skin color? No. Because of what? Maybe I should go back next Sunday and preach it again. Brothers and sisters, our blood, human blood life is cursed because of sin. Sin. Therefore, our natural blood life must die never to be resurrected. This is one reason why God is creating a new heaven and a new earth. Where did sin start? Anybody? Where was the first sin committed? Sorry? Adam and Eve? Before that? In the heavens! That's why Satan was thrown out of heaven. And that is why God hates the sin of pride. Satan didn't want to be like God. He wanted to be God. Puffed up with his own importance. Filled with the sin of arrogance and pride. Brothers and sisters, if there's one sin God hates, and the Bible tells us very clearly, is pride, arrogance, in whatever form. This is why it's so easy for God to bless the humble, the sincere, the broken. In Jesus, our cursed blood life died. And when he died on the cross, his body was pierced with a spear and out flowed his holy, precious blood and water. John 19, verses 32 to 34. Jesus is the first of a new humanity. Some people see this spearing of Jesus' body as an act of cruelty, but no. While his blood was still warm, piercing his side to make two reasons, for, 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 for two reasons, one to make sure that he was really dead, but the second one was the easiest way of releasing the blood out of his body because from this moment on, his resurrection body would not need blood. Would not need blood. It was a new body. That's the wonders, one of the great wonders of the resurrection. Sparing the side of his body was the easiest way to release the blood. In a new and human body, 
Jesus is the first of a new humanity. 1 Corinthians 15, he is the first fruits of those who have died and those of us who will die. Important reason number four, that clock keeps going and I have to keep going. To provide the bedrock of our faith and the assurance of our spiritual life. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 12 to 19. If Jesus had not been raised from the dead, seven negatives very quickly. If no resurrection, then Jesus has not been raised. Secondly, if Jesus is not raised, our preaching is useless. Three, if Jesus is not raised, our Christian life is futile. Four, if Jesus is not raised, the Bible and we are false witnesses of God teaching lies. Five, if Jesus is not raised, we are all spiritually dead in our sin. Six, if Jesus is not raised, all believers in Jesus who have died and will die are lost forever. Seven, if Jesus is not raised, then all his promises about the future, especially heaven, are not true. So we are to be pitied above all people. But brothers and sisters, this morning, the truth is, truth number five. What is it? The death and resurrection of Jesus demonstrate that Jesus is himself the resurrection and the life and demonstrates his complete and total and utter victory over Satan, over sin, and over death. Anybody with a hallelujah? Come on. Jesus fulfilled the prophetic promise recorded way back in Genesis 3.15. He crushed the head of the deceiver, Satan. And in Hebrews 2, verses 14 to 15, we read, Since the children have flesh and blood, he also shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and release those who all their lives were held captive by their fear of death. Hallelujah. We have no fear of death. And in John 16, verse 33, Jesus says, in the world you will have trials and difficulties, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world and everything in it. Let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, help us, your people, to enter into and to apply and to enjoy the total victory of Jesus over Satan, sin, and death, and fear. In Jesus' name, amen.